Yes Theory is just another large YouTube channel suddenly spreading vegan propaganda and lies under the guise of trying the diet. Oh uh, guys, just excuse me while I try the vegan diet and I already sound like an estrogenic soy bitch. January, a time where we take our first steps towards our New Year's resolutions and try to become the best versions of ourselves, am I right? And even though some goals revolve around climbing mountains or finally making this the year where you learn how to dance, most people's resolutions focus on one main thing, health. And in recent years, one health trend stands out above most. Vegan. 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 Vegan diet has more than doubled in the last year. Veganism is defined as a diet that excludes all animal-derived products like meat, eggs, and dairy products. It even includes honey. And in the past decade, the trend has skyrocketed. In the US, consumers identifying as vegan grew from 1% all the way up to 6%, and that number has continued to increase as more and more documentaries such as Game Changers and Cowspiracy have come out in support of the diet due to not only health benefits, but also environmental and animal cruelty prevention. Documentaries, aka not letting people think for themselves. Those are the three points I'm always referring to and disputing. Health, environment, and morals. Vegans think they are right on all three. All they're doing is spreading lies in their messages. And so, to fully put this diet to the test and see if it actually has the health benefits everybody claims, Matt decided to go on the vegan diet for a full 30 days to answer a few questions. How difficult will it be to change? How will his energy be affected? And will he decide to continue this vegan diet after the 30 day trial? We're gonna see where your deficiencies currently are on your past diet. Implement the vegan diet and see how much of an improvement we can get. Amazing. You ready? Yeah, I'm okay. ready. Your red blood cells being a little bit low at 4.29. One of the big things we wanna see here is where do you get great sources of heme and iron from? Kind of the big one that uh, people are concerned about when they're switching to a vegan diet is their vitamin B12. Mm -hmm. And prior to switching, your, your levels still aren't optimal. Rich green spirulina, great sources of B12. Spirulina is a great source of of B12. If I write B12 on a piece of paper and eat that piece of paper, is it a great source of B12? The form of vitamin B12 in spirulina is not available to humans just as the B12 in that piece of paper isn't. We don't have digestive systems of herbivorous animals. These vegan monkeys focus on heme iron and B12 with no thought of precursor nutrients. Metabolites needed to absorb them in various enzymatic reactions. They have a preschool understanding of nutrition, isolating two things, cherry picking, and not looking at the whole picture, not allowing you to think for yourself. Okay. But really, truly, we can improve all of these numbers with the vegan diet. Amazing. I want to see all that green when I come back. No bad grades. No bad grades. Will he have to paint on his eyebrows at the end of this just like she does? Okay, okay. I'm sorry, young lady. You're very lovely. I would love to take you out to dinner sometime. Perhaps some vegan sushi? Blood work is done. Now time to get on this diet and do it right. Starting today, I'm going vegan. I tried to go vegan a year ago. I tried for six days, and by the end of the six days, I was completely and utterly exhausted. I hadn't had no experts, nobody that was actually vegan tell me how to do it. So what I've done is I've gathered several experts, athletes, nutritionists, doctors, to help me throughout this process. To begin, I'm gonna be meeting with Dr. Matthew Letterman, who works with Whole Foods, who's written books on this, and he is gonna take me grocery shopping and make sure I buy all the right ingredients and all the right foods. I've always convinced myself that I need to eat meat for protein, for energy. So this is going to be challenging every single nutritional idea that I've ever had in my head. Let's go meet Matthew and let the day begin. Matt, thank you again for coming. Yeah, thanks it's for having me. It's fun to have you here. Have you noticed differences in how people react to a vegan diet? It's really what what you're eating, and, and we like to say whole foods, plant-based. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains and starchy vegetables, legumes, and then some nuts and seeds. What you want to get rid of is the processed foods. And obviously the question that every single vegan gets is how do you get enough protein? Every plant food has protein. Mm -hmm. So if you're getting your 2,000 calories there, whatever you need, you're going to blow away the amount of essential amino acids you need. I mean, that's a perfect segue into what we're about to do next, yeah. which is, you know, me, a grocery shop. Yeah. As a grown man, is, I have to admit, slightly embarrassing that I need help with studio shopping. Let's do it. <laughs> Appeal to authority, the almighty doctors. Ah, he has an MD. He has an MD in his name. Let's, let's listen to him. Let's praise him. 
I could tell this guy, Matthew Lederman, was a Seventh-day Adventist before even looking him up. All of these guys sound like just pretentious pricks. Why are they giving MDs to people who are just using it to push their religious dietary beliefs? They are creating this false question. Where do you get enough protein? Uh, where do you get enough protein? Because they have an answer for it. That is not the question that's actually being asked. The one being asked is about the bioavailability of plant versus animal nutrition and why vegans refuse to address actual science behind it. Oh wait, it's because they don't want you to think for yourself. Beautiful. Go me. So this is what it all looks like. The good news is that I get to eat a lot more than I'm used to. Hell yes. The odd thing about this is that here I have to like be very aware of everything that I'm putting into my body. So it's a great exercise in awareness and self-awareness of what we're consuming. In the meantime, I'm gonna have some dinner. Hey, that sure looks good. All those high omega-6 nuts, seed oils, processed grains, no semblance of actual nutrients we need for our bodies. Great exercise in self-awareness of what we're consuming. You mean making sure we down the soy slop our overlords are shoving down our throats? The repackaging of grains and seed oils that made us sick for dozens of years into a vegan diet? The vegan diet is as nutritious as a meatless standard American diet. What does that say? This is Matt's breakfast. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got two nice little nutritional bars, some seaweed, dried mangoes, lots of almonds, apple, banana. I'm like literally trying to load up as much as I can. Like I'm eating more than I think is normal. In about three hours, we're gonna meet with a vegan bodybuilder and he hopefully is gonna make me feel good about myself and say that I'm doing things right. I'm trying to gain muscle, you know, which is why I wanna talk to this bodybuilder because I'm trying to be a bodybuilder. Don't tell the guys. <laughs> Anyways. Mine too. Whatever, bro. How you doing, Matt? Nice to meet you. Nimai. Nice to meet you, man. Nimai has been vegan his entire life. Well, vegetarian, vegetarian initially, yeah. and then vegan ever yeah. since. Five years. What's been the key to fitness? Copious amounts of steroids, performance-enhancing drugs. Inject your tushy with every synthetic hormone you can get your hands on as long as it's vegan. Then lie to everyone about it to promote your business, your agenda, your products, just like every other fake natty in the fitness industry. It's always dependent on the person, right? Whatever their goals are. I wanted to compete. Uh, I figured if I could do it as a vegan and show that you could not only like live and thrive on a vegan diet, but you could be like a top level bodybuilder, then maybe it would kind of like change that notion, but it's still, Every single day I get it. Like, where do you get your protein? I'm like, dude, do I look like I'm struggling to get protein here? Like, it's like a freaking calling card for veganism. Like, do you get enough protein? I'm just like, yeah. Well, I feel like a freaking twig next to you. <laughs> Bad. It's just a different shape. It's a different, like, smaller <laughs> shape. Get him up. The little brother. <laughs> yeah. Bean and rice burrito. Time to munch on this Justin Bieber style, baby. Mm. The snacks and the lunches and the dinners are all so tasty. The one thing about this is just like, I feel like I'm constantly thinking about food and what I need to consume. It's like almost like a job to make sure that you're on top of your nutrition. And I hope that this is just temporary because if it's always like this and you always have to think about what you're eating next and all that, then it's just like, yeah, I think I'm gonna go crazy. On to day five tomorrow. 
After one week of going vegan, I was honestly feeling great. But I wanted to better understand the vegan community as a whole and see how veganism can help people who aren't necessarily professional athletes. All right, we are on our way to a dinner hosted by Robbie Barbaro. Robbie is the founder of a company called Mastering Diabetes, and he uses plant-based whole foods to help himself and others overcome diabetes. What's up, man? How you doing, man? Good to meet you. Uh, you, have, you have persimmons? Do you like persimmons? No, I had a persimmon. You never had a persimmon. This is a high chia persimmon. If you try to eat that early, it would taste like chalk. You can have a fuyu variety. Okay. This is a giant fuyu. Wow. This is a chocolate high chia. <laughs> All right, so Where are all these fruits coming from? <laughs> <laughs> Do you only eat fruit? So I eat fruits, greens, and non-starchy vegetables. Awesome. People with diabetes are scared of fruit, they're scared of potatoes, they're scared of rice. But we teach them the more of those you eat, the better your diabetes health. Eating too much fat, particularly saturated fat, causes insulin resistance. Okay. So when you take out the fat, you can eat the carbohydrates without having insulin spikes. And is meat a high fat? Meat is, yes. Even lean meats are right. still higher in fat. We have over 100 million people in the US alone that have either type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes. Really? 100 million. A third of the population? Yes. What? And have you been able to reverse diabetes for type 2s? Absolutely. We have lots of testimonials. We had a man come to us. He was told he needed six bypasses. He decided, you know what? I'm going to watch this information. I'm going to apply this out of the bypasses for now and see what happens. And he didn't need them. Wow. So he reversed his heart disease and avoided six bypass surgeries. Oh my God. Magic man. You are the magic man. Let me get this straight. A type 1 diabetic on an almost fruitarian diet, is he trying to evolve the disease into some type 3 diabetes that just turns your pancreas into a raisin? The reason saturated fat causes insulin resistance is because of inflammatory diets containing omega-6 seed oils and high amounts of carbohydrates present. Far more people are successful in treating their diabetes with ketogenic and low carbohydrate eating regimens. This should be illegal. So I was watching Taco Bell commercial and I was like, I kind of want Taco Bell. Like, obviously I can't have Taco Bell. I mean, I can if I wanted to, but I don't want to. Mm -hmm. I wanted to recreate it just using plants, so. What the hell? Oh, so then you get that. So That's incredible. And then you just, you just douse <laughs> and the guacamole is like come on man. <laughs> after you eat it you're like oh wow i feel kind of amazing yeah, i think yeah, that yeah, is the yeah, best yeah. part actually after you eat you don't feel like you need to take a two-hour nap i, I crush food <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool because you can crush food and not feel guilty about it here's some ketchup cheese dip it super hard Oh my god. <laughs> That's so good. It's like a restaurant. So good. So good. At this point, I felt really good and I was happy with everything I'd heard from my new vegan friends. Yeah, so nice oh, meeting you. Too. This is just the life story of vegans. Uh, I was craving meat like the little fairy boy I am, so I created a plant food that reminds me of meat but still doesn't satisfy me, so all I do is eat fake meat until my face looks like it's peeling off. And then I can't get boys anymore. I wonder why. Now I wanted to get a perspective from someone who didn't believe that a vegan diet was the best diet to follow. And so the next day I sat down to talk with Max Lugavere, author of the book Genius Foods, to get his take on veganism. Thanks for coming, dude. Yeah, appreciate for you, brother. Me. Yeah, same. You got started nutrition unexpectedly, like correct. Yeah, I was a journalist and my mom got sick. She, at a very young age, developed the earliest symptoms of uh, dementia. It sent me down the rabbit hole to try to understand why this would have happened to a woman at her age. You know, my mom was at the receiving end of nutritional information, you know, magazines mm -hmm. and newspapers and TV shows and things like that. Now I know that in many ways, some of the information that she was fed was not all that accurate and that continues to happen to people all around the world. So I started reading study after study after study. In a nutshell, I've had a tremendous amount of exposure to this yeah. topic. Is there anything that stuck out immediately that you were like, wow? The standard American diet is poison. It involves 60% of your calories coming from ultra processed foods. A vegan diet, a plant-based diet is one way, but it's not the only way. Incorporating properly raised animal products can be perfectly healthy. We have nutrients that are called micronutrients and I think when you look at the micronutrients that are offered in animal foods, I think they're invaluable to the body because they're already sort of in a plug and play format, ready to be utilized by the body. Max, <laughs> dude, how do you, the thing is, how do you even choose? Just like there's a new book 
Yeah. There's a new documentary. There's a new thing coming out every two seconds. But it, it does seem like the consensus is plants are good. Yeah, <laughs> that's the consensus. <laughs> but the fact that it's anything to an extreme may not be the right answer for most people. There's no such thing as a one-size-fits-all diet. What works for you might not work for me. So at the end of the day, I would encourage your viewers to do research for themselves, look to get their information from unbiased and credible sources, and to be willing to iterate and tinker. Thank you for saving me. Yeah. <laughs> My pleasure, man. That's the answer. That's yeah. the answer. How do you feel? Confused. I'm talking to only smart, well-studied people, and they have pretty different opinions about what I should be eating. I feel like if I were to do this right, I have to spend like a decade Research. This guy started talking about animal nutrition and there was a glimmer of hope But then he goes into full sellout chill mode and says hey do your own research That statement should actually be do your own research, but a vegan diet is wrong Day 15 halfway there and more confused than ever from day 16 to day 26, I went traveling. And even though continuing with the vegan challenge while traveling was hard, it was actually pretty doable. The Syrian restaurant we're going to this morning here in Germany is hopefully vegan. That's what do you mean hopefully? You keep saying that. It is vegan. It is vegan. This. Hey, 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 it man. Otherwise, I have my nuts in my bars. <laughs> my nuts. <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> Thanks, dude. And by the time I came back, I was luckily able to sit down with the main person who inspired me to take on this challenge, James Wilkes, the producer and protagonist of the hit documentary, Game Changers. It's perfect, amazing. Thank you, James. Nice to finally meet you, man. A little over a month ago is when I first saw Game Changers. Well done, man. It was so, so well done. Yeah, pretty much. Everybody's talking about it, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's crazy. On some days, we'll have 500,000 people just going to the recipe page on our website. Wow. My whole attempt in making this video is to kind of get all perspective. And I see you as like the, I mean, the front runner in this movement, in the vegan movement. Well, I I personally believe that a fully plant-based diet is optimal for health and athletic performance. Mm -hmm. Any direction that you take towards more plant-based eating is going to be beneficial, replacing both animal foods and also, you know, processed junk foods. Gotcha. And do you find that a lot of people that go vegan just aren't educated on how to do it? Any diet should be well planned. People should look into it and look about what they're putting in their body. You can't just take your current diet, take meat off the plate, and think you're good to go. But if you look at like nutrition deficiencies, on average, vegans are deficient in four nutrients. Meat eaters are deficient in nine. If you look at the World Health Organization or the FAO, they're all saying now to eat uh, a diet that's predominantly plant. Amazing, so, yeah, I mean, yeah. That, that totally makes sense. For me, the core is promoting plant-based eating and giving people the resources so that they don't fall off the bandwagon. Because a lot of times people don't know what to eat or where to eat or how to cook. Well, James, I don't want to take much more of your time, but I, I really appreciate it. Thanks, man. Talk to you soon. Cheers. Good luck with right everything. On. Great guy. And everything you said makes sense. Yeah. Everybody I've talked to is so nice, and it literally makes so much sense every time. Meat eaters versus vegans? I don't think meat eater is the best way to put it if the average American already consumes over 70% of their calories from processed plant garbage. Why are you calling the meat eaters just because they have a steak once a year? And what exactly made the Game Changers a hit documentary? The unbelievable amount of propaganda behind it? Why are we even talking about this? It's so obvious. How are any of these vegans not acknowledging how like in your face government media push this is? It should be just dismissed based off of how obvious that is. Same with the carnivore shills. Oh, can't have all the beef going bad on grocery store shelves. My daughter needs her Mercedes for her sweet 16. James Wilkes being the propped up puppet who is too big to fail. Last day, boy. Oh. I'm excited that I've completed my challenge. I guess we'll, uh, we'll be able to tell at the blood work whether I've changed, but at least I don't feel worse. That's the main thing. One, two. Awesome. All right. Awesome. Thank you so You're much. You're all set. You're welcome. All right. Time to get the blood results. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you. It's good to see you. Are we looking? Positive. Positive. 
<laughs> Your vitamin B12 actually improved, but that's from supplementing. So to say like a true vegan diet, your vitamin B12 is gonna go up. We can't, we can't confidently say that. We actually saw a pretty sharp increase of your total testosterone. You know, whether or not the vegan diet is right for you, I would say this is a huge positive benefit. Your TSH or your thyroid actually improved. Bye. More thyroid. What's that? What, is, what does thyroid do? Thyroid is part of the liver. Wrong. No. <laughs> <laughs> it has almost some effect on every body system. Okay. So energy, sleep. Your T4 looks superior as well. Oh my god, that's amazing. Great. You've actually decreased the amount of good cholesterol that you have. And if you were eating a lot of fish like salmon and tuna mm -hmm. prior to switching was, your diet. Yeah. yeah. Tell me where it came from. If you want to remain on the vegan diet, you really have to ramp up your source of good healthy fats mm -hmm. to kind of counterbalance what's been removed. Gotcha. Your protein levels look actually even better. Wow. Yeah. Can be surprising. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Then we want to look at your total iron, actually improved with a vegan diet. That's actually crazy. You're, you're a phenomenon at this point. <laughs> it's that especially was the number one thing I was worried about. Was yeah, iron. your iron looks even better. Wow. Yeah. You know, of everything, plant-based is best for you. Or a vegan diet is best for you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're so welcome. Appreciate you. Yeah, of course. All right. I did not expect the results to be that good. It's actually quite shocking. I kind of feel like I don't have a choice but to go majority plant-based now. The results were better after they were before and I was already eating so healthy. I think I'll still have some animal product once in a while, but mostly plant-based. Because it is very restrictive, so it is nice to be able to pick for yourself what you want. And yeah, I guess we'll see you next week. Of course, the Game Changers and people involved are sponsoring this video. I thought the documentary was such a hit. Why are you paying all these high profile YouTubers to push your agenda even more? Most blood work is not indicative of tissue levels, especially vitamin B12. Testosterone went up, thyroid numbers improved. That's what happens when you remove estrogenic feedlot beef from your diet. The problem isn't meat. The problem is how we're raising the meat. The carnivore shills want you to consume this estrogenic feedlot beef so they can continue to shove supplements, exercise routines, stuff you don't need down your throats, keep you unhealthy, stupid, and worst of all, unhappy. The vegans, on the other hand, just want people to stop eating meat, develop nutrient deficiencies over the course of a few months, lower the IQ of the population even further, and I don't know how that's possible to be honest. You know what's really irritating? The last few times I've been browsing Reddit this week, the top post on the whole website is like, oh my god, my cat is such a handsome young man. Guys, animals can't be handsome. Why don't you go dress up in some fur suits and dance with each other naked? Uh, speaking of low IQ, they could have avoided advertising their online app named Honey at the end of this video after promoting veganism. Uh, yes, Theory, if you need a new risk analytics guy, you have my email. Seems like you do. This is a super mainstream normie YouTube channel and there are likely at least thousands of people that will give this a shot. Very unfortunate. Maybe I can help some people with my message. So thank you guys for joining me. Please like the video, subscribe if you haven't, Hit that bell icon to get notified when Frankie Boy's pretty face is online. If you guys want to support me further, check out my book, The Ancestral Indigenous Diet, that encapsulates my seven years of nutritional understanding. You can also go to all of the links in the description, Frankie's Syringe Meat, Frankie's Naturals, frank-stefano.com. If you want one-on-one -on -one help in looking like a Roman statue, sign up for frank-stefano.com if you want to learn the top five carnivore mistakes. Thanks again, guys, and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Oh,